think obviously you gotta you know raise your level level somewhat. Um, you know, I think everybody level raises in the postseason. Um, and for me, I just try to take it up a notch. But I don't think there's a um, big discrepancy between in season AD and, and postseason AD. AD, next question is going to be from Tanya. Um, I was wondering how how close or far as, as you guys are going through practice, how close or far do you feel like to where you guys want to be for the games like how I think we're pretty close. Um, there's still some things that we need to work on. Uh, we were one of the you know worst teams in transition, so we've been you know going over that a ton, watching film on that a ton. Um, but I think you know everybody came back in shape. You know, but you could tell God's been working during the break, and um, now it's just about putting it all back together. Ad, um, you guys have talked a lot this year about your chemistry, but obviously being in the same place. Is there something that you guys do a lot more together? Is it just meals? Is it something on campus like fishing, golf, something like that? Uh, it's been video games so far. You know, we are starting. You know, uh, a couple of leagues and different couple of games. Um, you know, we didn't do that much, you know, in L.A. So I think that's kind of been the biggest thing that we, you know, kind of, you know, adopted since we've been here is, is playing video games as a team. Okay, now the next one's going to come from Will. All right, David. AD, hey, David Aldrich, how are you, sir? It's okay. Hey, um, this, is, this may be an odd question, but did you have anything – terms of a pregame routine going out to Staples, you know, getting the Staples once you got the Staples, you know, somebody that you saw in the building every day, every before every game, or that you did before every game, that you won't be able to do in the bubble that you will miss? Oh, uh, no, I mean, just kind of treat it as a away game um, hmm. routine, just kind of go into that format. But there's nothing that I did specifically that will alter my pregame routine. Okay, next up, Chris. Chris Maddox. Hey, dude, they're um, with the, the MVP voting going to be happening the next couple of weeks or whatever. What do you think the strongest argument is for LeBron to be MVP this year? Um, the things he's doing at his age. I mean, he's playing like probably one of his you know best years. Um, Top team in the West, you know he the things he's able to do on the floor, um, especially when everybody was saying you know he was washed and he, you know he should hang it up and all these things. He come back with a with a dominant performance and then just to be even in the race, you know at this age, uh, at this point in his career, um, you know and, and for me to to see it every night, um, and the things he do on a consistent basis, not you know in stretches, three games here, four games here, but he does it every night. And he's been doing it his whole career. Um, I think you know, it's a, it's a you know, good argument for him to be MVP. Okay, we're Joe Barden here. So, they took us into the area today and we saw what it's going to look like. It's, it's not an empty gym, how you right, imagine. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. it? And what, do you, what do you think? I think it's pretty cool um, how to have the, the big monitors where you can have your, your family, friends, fans, whoever uh, kind of be in the arena. Um, I think that's a pretty dope idea. Uh, I know they're still trying to figure out some things as far as lighting and and the sounds and stuff, but I think the whole concept of it, the concept of it, is pretty dope. And then um, they they showed us seats where players can go and watch other teams. Yeah. You think you'll do that? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, Got to look at the schedule and see who's playing and stuff like that. But it's not much <laughs> to do here, so I mean, you know, to go out and watch some other teams and scout a little bit. Um, you know, I might, I might end up doing it. Okay, Rachel. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> um, we have the whole like rest versus rust debate a lot, but we've never really had it when there's a four-month break in the middle mm -hmm. of the season. Do you think that your team in particular is going to come back more rested and actually maybe healthier, more energized, or more rested and a little not quite? Together? No, I think we're rested and energized. Um, you know, I think. It just gave everybody a chance to decompress, you know, in the middle of the season and trying to try to get back healthy, um, get their bodies back right, um, and just kind of get away from the game a little bit. Uh, so I think just 
you know, whoever wins is going to be the team that's mentally tough. I mean, it's not, I don't think this has to do anything with physical attributes. It's more, you know, who's mentally tough to get through. You know, just being here and not seeing your family and, um, you know, getting back to work. So I think, uh, you know, I think we have a dis uh, we have an advantage in that category. Mark Spears. Yeah. What's up, Mark? Um, I know you're not going to have a social justice message on the jersey, but is, is there anything that you're okay. passionate about that you want to get out, maybe the game or the shoes? You know, a lot of guys are talking about Breonna Taylor. Is there anything that's really impactful and meaningful to you that you hope to get out over the next three and a half months? Yeah, I think just as a group, uh, we're trying to figure out what we can do as a team. Um, this is one of the biggest platforms that we can use for ourselves to, to speak out and for everyone to, everyone to hear us. Um, so I think individually we, we're impactful, but together we're more impactful. And, you know, we've been trying to figure out things as a, as a group as far, as far as the Lakers for, for months since everything's been going on. So uh, we're still trying to figure out ways that we can um, kind of let our voices be heard as a unit um, during the games, you know, whether it might be shirts or whatever it is. And, and then for me, uh, individually, um, I have some, some shoes coming to okay. kind of represent it. Yeah, and, and on a follow-up on that, with your brand, the bronze brand, combined with the Lakers brand, right. you, you guys probably have the loudest voice here too. Is that something you guys talk about and trying to make the best of that? Uh, we haven't talked about that specifically, but we just know um, – that's the Lakers brand, you know, it's huge. And it's trying to use that platform that the Lakers have and then individually that each player has and bring it all together to, to be uh, heard even more. Taylor? Uh, so, you know, obviously you're focused on winning the lead. We heard Vogel talk about why you should be the defensive player of the year. Uh, what were your thoughts on what he said and what's your case for that? I didn't even hear what Vogel said. <laughs> well, what is that? What's your case for why you should be? Oh, I don't have a case. I let that. <laughs> I let my teammates decide and, and the fans decide. But um, I just go out there and play hard every night. You know, I, my biggest impact that I think I have is defensively. I, I love playing defense. Um, I love stopping other other players, um, making it tough on other players. So um, they're just like my case in a nutshell. But I'm pretty sure Coach has some good things, and you know, I'm pretty sure you guys asked Brian Hill have a whole list for you guys, but um, I just go out there and try to and try to be great and leave my team on the defensive end and, and help them guys get better each and every night. Thank you. Yeah. That would be Will of the last ones. Will, all set. All right, we're going to take two more from Melissa. Hey, D, Melissa Rowland here. I'm curious, obviously, the bubble in many senses is restricted, but do you feel kind of a newfound sense of freedom and just being able to walk around by yourself without security with you at all times? Oh, uh, I mean, I always kind of have freedom. I mean, um, this is more so just a safety thing. I mean, we're safe here. I mean, there's no one that's allowed to be in here that's not allowed to be in here. So, um, you know, a lot of guys are safe and just able to walk around and, and kind of do your own thing. So um, I think that's what everybody was kind of, you know, worried about before uh, with the parks opening and how secure was the camp is going to be, the bubble is going to be. Um, and when we got here, we kind of saw that it was pretty secure and uh, just kind of took that, that off our shoulders a little bit.